Via Dolorosa, the way of suffering. Tradition says this is the street where Jesus took his last steps on earth. For centuries, Christians have walked the Via Dolorosa to retrace the journey to the cross. But are they walking in the right direction? From an archaeological perspective, what might have been the steps on Jesus' last journey from the Mount of Olives to Pilate and to his crucifixion, a new suggested itinerary is emerging. The Gospels tell us that Jesus spent his last night here on the Mount of Olives, in the Garden of Gethsemane. Here Judas betrayed him, and the temple guard arrested him. They led Jesus down through the Kidron Valley and up to Mount Zion, to the home of Caiaphas, the high priest. This is the road they would have taken. How do you know from an archaeological standpoint that this is the road that Jesus walked down? As since it was a main street and it leads down the Kidron Valley and up to the Mount of Olives, it's a very good candidate for Jesus to have taken that path. This church was built on the ruins of the house of the high priest. Under the house is a cistern, the prison where Jesus may have been held the night before he died. And it's a very interesting room. It's a cistern. It's carved out of the rock and made into a place that you can store water. But in this case, a prisoner could be lowered through that opening and would have no way of escape. It makes us think of the psalm where David writes, O oh Lord, I've been cast into the pit with no way of escape. The next morning, Jesus was taken to Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor of Judea. This is where archaeology takes a detour from tradition. The real archaeology of Jerusalem began in a serious way from 67 on. And that means for the last 40 years, there's been the opportunity to really get down to first century Jerusalem and to find out where things lay in that city at the time of Jesus. This is station two of the Way of the Cross. In Jesus' day, the Antonia Fortress stood here, the headquarters for the Roman army. Tradition says this was the place where Pilate put Jesus on trial. Archaeologists say tradition is wrong. We know that Roman soldiers were encamped in that area of the Antonia Fortress. The northwest corner of the city was a garrison for Roman soldiers who were keeping peace and watch over the Temple Mount. But of course, the governor doesn't live in the garrison with the soldiers. The governor lives in the palace with the gardens. That palace was half a mile away, on the western side of the city. Under this tower are the remains of King Herod's palace. When Pilate came to Jerusalem, this is where he stayed. Just outside the tower wall is an ancient stone platform. Archaeologists say this was the judgment seat where Jesus was tried. The palace of Pontius Pilate and the palace of Herod lay behind this wall. So this is really the most likely candidate for Jesus having come from the south, outside of the city wall, mm -hmm. to his trial. This is where Pilate washed his hands and made his famous statement, Behold the man. Scholars may disagree on the path Jesus took, but most agree that his final steps lead here, to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. The Roman Emperor Constantine built the church in 335 to mark the site of Jesus' death and burial. And it's one spot where archaeology and tradition agree. Helena, the mother of Constantine, did go around and she interviewed Christians who were living here to find out what their memories were, the historic memories that the local church preserved. She finds this spot, which the local Christians have venerated as the burial place of Jesus. In Jesus' time, Golgotha was a rocky cliff that may have looked something like this. Today, what's left of the original hill is inside the church. This bedrock, which begins here, extends up over our heads about 40 feet. This little bit has been left to show us because this is the traditional site of Golgotha, or Calvary, where Jesus was crucified. John's Gospel says Jesus was buried close to the place where he died. Inside the church is a tomb that's said to belong to the man who buried Jesus. 
So this is the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea? Well, traditionally ascribed to Joseph of Arimathea, here right next to Calvary, we find cut into the rock, quite distinctive Second Temple period tombs. Every year, millions of Christians visit the Holy Sepulchre and walk the Via Dolorosa, while more authentic sites like this one are still unknown to many tourists. For the followers of Jesus, the important thing isn't where he walked, but what he accomplished. I think it's kind of ironic and powerful to think that when Jesus might have walked down this road the first time, he and he went he to pray, back. yeah, and, and on the Mount of Olives, he has to make a decision. Is he going to stay and see it through to his death, or is he just going to run over the hill? Because on the Mount of Olives, you could go right off into the desert and never be found again. And he stayed, he had the victory in his prayer, and when he came back, he came back ready to lay down his life for all of us.